Prince Andrew may have agreed to settle the sexual assault lawsuit, but there are still many questions of what happened and how it's impacting the most famous family on the planet. Robert Johnson, ABC News contributor, joins us now. Robert, thanks so much for joining us. So Prince Andrew was set to sit for a deposition next month in which he would have been questioned under oath. What kind of message is Prince Andrew sending by settling this lawsuit instead of letting it go to trial? Well, a lot of people over here in the UK are sort of suggesting that if you've got enough money, you can get away with something, and that's how it's been interpreted. Unfortunately for him, it certainly hasn't let him off the hook. It's certainly not necessarily improved his reputation in any way. He's admitted to nothing. He's admitted to nothing, but by paying substantial amount of money to Virginia Gouffray's uh, charity, um, as people here, it's been suggested that that says an awful lot about the situation. Uh, I don't think he had much choice because the deposition that was coming up could have been even more excruciating than that appalling television interview he gave when a lot of, lot of people just gave up on him after that. And what does the settlement, though, mean for the royal family, the prestige of the family? Well, I think it's been tarnished. There's no doubt about that. Um, the, the fact is, this year, though, the Queen's... Uh, Platinum Jubilee, 70 years on the throne. I think the royal family, led essentially by the Prince of Wales, decided that this is enough was enough. They wanted to make a, um, a break from this drip trip story that had been going on for months and months and months, and that they, it was damaging the reputation of the of the institution, of the monarchy, and the family itself. So, yeah. but I must admit, I don't think it's necessarily improved the reputation of either the Prince of uh, uh, Prince Andrew or the monarchy itself because a lot of people are saying that this hasn't really resolved anything. It hasn't proved one way or the other uh, what went on. And you use that word tarnish. Of course, this case has significantly tarnished Andrew's image. He stepped back from royal duties back in 2019. How has this impacted his own personal public standing? I think his public standing was an all-time low anyway. And quite recently, when the royal family took the decision to take away his royal patronages and his military associations, effectively take away his HRH so that he was a private citizen, and there wasn't really much more that could be done to him in terms of, you know, in terms of his, his reputation. It was on the floor. Um, at least and this now will mean that he can quietly, behind the scenes, try to rebuild that by doing whatever work he wants to do. But personally, I think that the royal family, with this man now in his 60s, and the royal family looking to slim down once the Prince of Wales becomes king, I don't think there's any way back for him into public life. And this civil suit is linked, of course, to some of the disturbing allegations against Jeffrey Epstein. Have we learned anything new about Andrew's relationship with him? The only thing is, on this particular time, he has actually apologised for his association with Epstein. He didn't do that to start with. Well, of course, the big, the big issue here has always been that, you know, Epstein convicted uh, uh, the paedophile. We've had his relationship with Jelaine Maxwell, who, of course, uh, was convicted, although she's appealing in the case, in the sex trafficking case. His judgment is clearly flawed. I mean, these are people that he associated with, was friends with, he invited to the palace. Um, and I think that really people are saying that uh, whatever way you look at this, even if Prince Andrew is not admitting any liability or any guilt here, his, his judgment is certainly called into question. And I can't see any charities or, or anybody linked with the royal family wanting to have him in any way associated with their, with their organisations. And the big burning question, of course, the royal family gets paid partially by public money. Do we know where the money for this settlement is coming from? We don't, and it's not being, they're not even saying how much the settlement ha is. Or there's, there's discussions over here that it's in the region of, say, $10 million. Um, I suspect it'd be less than that, actually. I mean, the Virginia Good Phrase had in the region of around about $7 million in payouts, according to some sources, including the half a million dollars she got from Epstein way back in, 2000, in the 2009 or so. So, um, will it be public money? I very much doubt it. The, we understand that the, the Duke of York has been selling a, a, a $30 million uh, ski chalet in, in Switzerland, and that is in the process of going through. Um, but the royal family are, are a rich family, and I'm sure the money has been found and prepared for uh, ahead of this uh, payout. Is that something, though, that people there are complaining about, saying, look, this is just British taxpayer money that's being used? 
I mean, it won't be it won't be taxpayer money. It'll be private money, either loaned to him by the Queen until he's made the sale of that property, or from other sources. But it won't be it will not be linked to public money. Robert Johnson, we thank you so much for your insight and time, as always. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.